ready? I'm ready. Hello everyone. Welcome back to volume one and to another video with Coach B. The video you've all been waiting for. B has been on my channel a couple of times now. We've done a lot of coaching and movement drills together on my channel, which have always gone down really, really well. But today, B and I are gonna be having a little session. And when I say B and I, I mean B is gonna be climbing and I'm gonna be behind the camera. B's gonna be tackling some of her kind of project level climbs on on the comp ball yeah. or around the centre? On the comp ball. I thought it would be interesting for you guys to see how I implement the, the things that I coach and how uh, luckily they seem to be working in my climbing and they seem to be coming out at my project level now. So yeah, I thought I'd show you some of the things I've been doing here at Bonnie One and hopefully help you see how some of these drills can work in kind of real time at project level. Cool. I'm really excited to see B climb these. It's not often, B's a very, very strong climber, and it's not often that I've seen B's climbs climb, so I'm ready to be, I'm ready to be amazed, B, if that's not too much pressure. <laughs> so cool. First of all, I think you said you were going to take us through some warm-ups. Yeah, I'll do my warm-up routine. Cool, um, so I'll film yeah. that, and then we'll hit projects. So is this something that you do pretty much before every climbing session. Normally, if it's a bit chilly, to get the heart rate going. But on a day like this, I wouldn't always do skipping to be honest if I'm already quite warm. I would sometimes just go straight into yoga. But sometimes you can get a little bit too hot. Oh. So that normally gets me nice and warm, so mobilizes all of the joints. Um, I used to be really inflexible as well, so I use that sun salutation to improve my flexibility and I can now touch my toes, which is very exciting. Um, so depending on what I'm projecting as well, I might make my warm up more specific for um, the terrain that I'm on, for example. So I know that things are gonna be quite powerful today on the comp wall. So it might be that I do a bit more explosive stuff with the legs and with the upper body. So one of my favorite little exercises, is froggy leg squat jump. Pretty stupid one, but everyone enjoys it. So you sit down into a deep uh, frog leg position and then explode up from that position and absorb on the way back down. Another one that I love on this, what do I call this? Um, mountain climber press, where rather than just a standard mountain climber, to increase um, my hip mobility, I'd bounce into an open hip position and add a little press up into it. So we're getting that explosive mobility. Cool, now upper body. We've always got to get the scapula working. So some scap shrugs. First of all, just focusing on the shoulders. And then I might increase that range into adding the core now. So rather than just focusing on my scapula, I want to make sure that I'm engaging my deep core as well. Building up to on my sixth set, coming into a slightly more front lever position. This is a little bit low, so if you do have somewhere higher, so your feet aren't tucked behind, it's a bit easier. So shoulders, core, and lever. And I'm trying to keep my arms nice and straight here. So I'm encouraging that levering off a straight arm and lifting through the hips. Um, a nice easy way to get the core engaged and the hips working is just doing really basic back bridges. So we want to be firing up that posterior chain that you would have seen in the other technique videos to encourage the use of the glutes and the core and the legs and you can alternate. Should we do some technique drills? Best way to get fired up ready to use all the right muscles when you're climbing is to just do a few deliberate drills to make sure that you're kind of encouraging your body to work in the way that you want it to be working on the wall. So 
as a little reminder, I would jump on my technique board and just do a couple of technique drills. Love that dirty shoes from being outside. So hopefully this is familiar to you all. So let's start with some drop knee drills. Now I do always have to remind myself to be really accurate and think about the way that I'm moving. So it's very easy just to get back into old habits. So let's do that same thing on the left. Really thinking about how I'm placing my feet. Lifting through the hips. And here I'm really trying to like fire up my glutes and make sure that they're ready to switch on when I need them on the steeple. I apologise if all you can hear is me panting. <laughs> I'll rest more between exercises. Inside edge flag time. My favourite of them all. So you can do uh, strength training exercises using this drill by hovering your hand over the hold. So if I really want to engage, I know that I'm in a good position if I can hover my hand over that hold. And something that I've realised people are missing with the flag in particular is the standing up on the pushing leg before you release the hand and before you flag. So you wanna keep the glutes engaged and the hips nice and high in the movement the whole time. So here, the steering hand's helping me stand up. Then I lock in and then I reach. So I stand up, lock in and then reach. Feet, hips, hands. Okay, now, as a bit of a contrast for the difference between linking together inside edges and outside edges, this is quite an interesting one for you guys to hopefully see comparatively how it can be a bit more complicated. So outside edge flag, the most natural and comfortable position for us normally to start climbing in, but it requires quite a lot more movement. So I'm having to rotate my ankle to open up my hips in order to step through. Rotate to then step through. So it's still a great technique that will always be needed and used in climbing. But if that and rock overs are your only kind of bread and butter, you end up missing that kind of fine tuning that really makes climbing flow and feel really strong. Uh, so outside edges on this side. So you've got to be really careful how you place the outside edge of the shoe because in order to rotate, you have to be on the perfect part of the foothold. So you can rotate and step through. Rotate and step through. When we're placing the foot, if we know that we have to rotate or do a foot swap, we need to place the foot so that we've got room to rotate round and move from the inside edge to the outside edge. If I place too far onto the hold and I try and rotate, I knock myself down to the edge of the hold. If I place too close in, I knock myself off the other side of the hold. So it's really important to be right in the middle and you just need to play around with that because everybody's feet and shoes are a little bit different. Uh, okay. So rotating the back foot in order to open up the hips to step through. Rotating the back foot through. All of this technique stuff that I try and teach is to ingrain the most efficient movement pattern for any given moment, but it may well be that that given moment doesn't allow you to keep your arms straight and doesn't allow you to move as efficiently as you possibly could. Because sometimes you'll end up in a position where you may only have one foothold and you know that you've got to rock over onto that foothold. So for example, 
And if in our pyramid we take away any of the holds to the right of this right hand hold, I'm left with only one foot here. And say my goal is that purple one, I'm gonna have to rock over and there's gonna be an element of bicep abuse. So how can I make that as little as possible and make that movement as efficient as possible? So we can either smear against the wall or we can generate well, both really. We can also generate as much movement as possible with our steering hand, and we can swing our center of gravity over the foot in order to rock over and lift up, but I'm still getting that engagement through the hips, and I'm still pulling as little as possible. So in contrast to that, if I tried doing that statically, it's then a lot of effort because my bum's dragging me down the whole time. Um, what you may see some people do is attempting sort of smear drops, where you'd have a smearing foot and you can still get if you're pretty efficient at smearing you can actually get quite a good rotation into the wall if you push quite hard against the, the smearing foot another time where you're often forced into that lock off uh, rock over position is when you're on like a gaston so when i think i spoke about the bucket theory in one of the videos if the handhold doesn't feel um like it's the right way around you might end up on a left hand hold with your right hand. So that would be the most comfortable to hold it. Whereas you may end up in a sequence where you have to hold that with the right. So that's gonna force you into a rock over position. So you're gonna end up coming through like this. And then we still wanna make sure that if we do end up in this position, we're getting our center of gravity as far over the foot as possible so that we're still getting the belly button over that toe getting our weight close to the wall and locking off so even though it looks like i'm doing a lot of locking off there's actually very little weight on this arm because there was so much on my foot it was quite balanced okay so we've done our static drills where we've been really thinking about lifting through the hips and engaging through the whole body focusing on the footwork now we're going to start being a little bit more dynamic and snappy because we're about to do quite a powerful session on the comp wall so rather than doing our uh, lock and hover i'm now going to do a snap so as i place the feet i'm then going to snap lifting the hips with quite a lot of power at the end of that movement now this only really works when you've got this movement dialed quite well into your movement patterns So we know with a fair amount of confidence there's going to be times where we're going to have to fire pretty quickly. So we want to get those fast switch muscle fibers woken up ready for action in the correct way. So by that I mean reinforcing that, keeping the shoulders engaged, core engaged and lifting through the hips rather than just doing say quick pull ups, which has its place for sure. But we also want to make sure we're firing everything else up to give our body the best chance to use every muscle in our body. Um, I'm now just going to do a few more kind of dynamic pogo drills. So the flagging stuff I've done so far has been quite static. So I'm gonna try, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna try and add an element of pogo into every move. So I'm coordinating my movements to make sure that I've got a nice efficient flow going on both sides. So here I'm using a swinging back leg to generate the momentum, but also my steering hand, this guy. And I'm pushing with my right leg to generate that power. So I'm just practicing generating that momentum. And it should all be behind a nice straight lever arm. The inside edge flag is a really strong position when you've drilled it so that your body knows exactly what to be firing. It's also a very static position. So what you'll notice is with my pogo leg, it was pretty dynamic and it was easy for me to pop. This technique, not much dynamic about it, but you can still get that snap going. So I can almost drive the flagged leg down 
and snap my hips up. So drive down and snap up. So there's that snap in the hips as I drive the leg down and lift the hips up. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to cover on here. We've done pogo leg, we've done driving, we've done hover, we've done snap, we've done footwork. Yeah? Climb time. Climb time. Okay, so I'm now going to find some climbs that are still pretty comfortable, um, but there is a few more interesting moves and um, might be a little bit more problem solving. So I'm going to start on this black one where it's fairly juggy, um, but there's an interesting sequence of holds. So I'm going to try and apply everything that I've just been doing on my technique board uh, to this climb and see if I can get my glutes firing and do as little um, pulling as, as I need, really. What felt like very little pulling. I felt really engaged and strong through my body. So I know that I'm good to start trying something a little bit harder. So this, one of the hardest squares I think we've ever set here. Ah, that's, I mean, there's often some hard ones. So this one involves some really engaged heel hooks. So that's not something that I've specifically warmed up for today. So it might be worth if I know that I'm trying a project of something near my limit, where I've got to really pull, just waking up my calves because you can and my hammies so you can get a little bit crampy so if you know that you're about to do a heel hook maybe just doing a couple on something a little bit easier practicing that movement in the way that you know you want to be pulling on your project because um, these pockets are pretty bad you've got to squeeze real hard so i'll give it a go because something that i find with even some of my really good um clients they're still not fully engaging um, heel hooks in kind of sketchy slopey pockets like this and it really highlights that we can do more work on um, placement of the heels so I'm going to try when I place that heel to demonstrate how to do it really well and um, if it's not clear I'll do it on another hold uh, this is this is hard like it I had to uh, took me a few goes this one so I'm not not hopeful that this will be an easy easy send and do up my shoes nice and tight okay see if I'm feeling strong and engaged so you need to roll in and then point down and talk roll in point down and talk roll in point down and talk That's good, that felt really hard the other day. Must be the warm up. Uh, so, hopefully, that was clear on the video how you almost roll in sideways to kind of talk the rubber into the back of the, the hold or whatever you've got, and then point the toe down. And then, when you hopefully your core and glutes are all ready and fired up, you'll be able to lift through the hips. And it's that kind of pointing down of the toe initiates the lift of the hips through the, through the movement, connects everything together. Right. Right, so what? what's the, what's the flavour of this climb? So, it's quite powerful. Oh, actually I do have a project, the sit start to this purple. Um, so even the stand, it's like quite a big flick out uh, right to a pinch. And then there's a brilliant example of the, the Gaston. I'm going to show you bicep abuse to the <laughs> extreme in a minute. Um, where I think I have to just come up into a really big shouldery move and then flick into an undercut um, and then oh yeah really funky move over the volume that I can't really remember but I'll see what see what happens when I get there remember it being a bit scary 
like most moves at the top of this wall. <laughs> right, let's see what happens. Very nearly dropped that shoulder move that time. It's so much fun. There's so much to it. We're just like in different moves the whole way. Pretty sure my leg was basically sat on that blue for the last move. I was like this, but it's not a comp. <laughs> cool. Maybe I should try the sit start to it. So the sit start, hexagon. This is, things are getting serious. Um, I think I established though that I could just about reach that. So I know that I need to go real big. And then hopefully once I catch that, I can just flick straight into that first move. Bit of uh, brushing prep time. I think it is fairly sustained to be honest. I mean, I find the moves where I can't technique my way through it so like there when I can do the deep back flag that feels really nice when I can do the inside edge flag that feels solid but it's like that big flick out to the pinch is quite tough and then the to be fair I, you can get quite a nice drop knee but that flick up into the shoulder it feels quite quite far and strenuous and then getting on to the that foot to come up to the pit. actually yeah moving off that uh, gassed on to the pinch, I think is the crux probably. Although now I'm adding this in, pretty sure that's gonna be the crux by far for me now. Right, let's see how it feels. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, it's not, not a fantastic hold you're going to. Got a little lip to it. <laughs> You're like, that but is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say at the distance that we're going from, it's droppable yeah. at that size. But I think if I got that right, yeah. I can get a good good pad and a half behind that. So what the real pros would do at this point is visualise success. And this is why I'm a coach, not an athlete, because I'm <laughs> very bad at visualising myself doing things and believing that I can actually I visualise it. Do it's you? the yeah in my mind it's already going to be the thumbnail can you actually do that you visualize. can like visualize yourself succeeding on stuff no. <laughs> <laughs> i thought you were about to tell me no. you've got like this amazing one Some time i did can... have a dream that i climb a project and then i climb a project but that was because basically visualization. i wanted it so i was thinking about it that's so cool like i swear to, i i don't often believe people when they when they say it but some people can quite literally see themselves oh, doing no. moves and achieving I can imagine you doing the moves and achieving. On Could this. you imagine yourself on your project where you knew you'd done all the moves and you just need to link it together? Mm, yeah, maybe sometimes. Yeah, that's really cool. Where I, it flips from like, I don't think it will go, I don't think it, it could. I can imagine it, but I don't think it will happen. I think that's maybe the self-doubt. Yeah. I'm really, like at the moment, I'm... It's actually really cool. My brain's gone to a far better place recently and I've got my like, on-site levels yeah. really shot up because I've got just I don't know, a lot more confidence in something at the moment. So I can kind of, I do actually believe I can do all these moves right now, which is quite cool. Whereas often yeah. when I'm on a project, there'll be that annoying little niggly part that's like, yeah, just, just give up, you can't do it. And that's, and some people don't have that and, and that's a gift, but we do have to really work on that. Where's that coming from and why? where is that confidence? Why don't I believe I can yeah. do it? When other people would probably be like, of course you can do it. Mm -hmm. And that would be quite surprising for me, but yeah, I'd say, just going a little bit deep there. can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Nice. 
Come on, come on. Yes, come on. So strong. You got it. Yes, baby. Oh boy, that's oh. a tough move. That, that's gonna be interesting coming into that. I just need to sink my weight way further over. Maybe turn that hand. I don't think okay. you did. I think you tried to go over from there. Maybe. That's the nice, one. Nice, nice. So good. Yes. Okay. So that's going to be pretty tiring by that point. Cool. Sneaky little mm -hmm. intermediate. Very cool. Oh, this is good. <laughs> How do you approach rest when you're like projecting? Um, if I know I'm getting really tired, I'll try and take my shoes off because that's normally anything that stops me. Uh, start brushing for sure because yeah. that makes me rest. I think it's quite good to keep your arms moving as well when you're resting. I think it's a lot better to keep moving around than sit still. Mm -hmm. My bugbear is people resting like this, especially when they're pumped. It's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. Just completely blocking Straight off arms. your uh, forearms ability to recover. Ah. So keeping moving and brushing and even just walking around. Top top tip. Is a lot better. <laughs> Done it? Yeah. Yeah? Totally, totally succeeded. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a little monkey, that move. <laughs> that would go. Yeah? Yeah, one day. One day. I saved my energy for the other stuff today, yeah. but happy with that. Couldn't do the start the other day. So that's uh, cool. A very similar scary big move, but next level harder is this white that I've not done yet. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of really nice techniques um, building up to that last big pop. So I'm gonna try, maybe have a few seconds rest, but try and um, visually explain how I'm gonna try and use as many techniques as I can so that by the time I get to that big scary crux move, I've got so much left in the tank that I have the confidence to just go for it. Which is what happened there actually, which was, felt good. So, even the thought of this one makes me a bit shaky for some reason. Oh, it's so scary. Oh, I was literally looking at it going, you can do it, it's right there. I break it down and reduce the pressure and I say, I'm gonna just try and touch the bottom of that hold. Yeah. It then gives me what feels like, I know you're supposed to aim past the holds, but if I give myself the mentality of, you're just gonna try and touch it, it'll then make me brave enough to go for it. And then you never know, I might catch it. like I should be able to once I'm on there sort my body out to almost turn it into a bit of a, a layback or an outside edge even on the the lower edge or even like an inside but for some reason it doesn't feel right I don't know if that's just head but this is the funny thing about climbing 
It's always so hard to know if it's your brain or your body that's stopping you. Hmm. I've got to give it one more go, haven't I, after that? Oh no, that was a silly idea. That was a silly idea. I was really hoping I could turn it and do it static. Interesting though that I had more time on that than I thought. Yeah. It's actually not too bad. So maybe if I hadn't got distracted by going up with the heel and I just used the lower foot, maybe I could have driven off a higher foot. I swear to God, I'm going to get off the edge one day. Oh my goodness. Oh, why is that move so hard? That was another big flying lesson. I think, I think I'm going to rest. And I'll let you know when I work out another way. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't feel right. And I have seen a lot of people come off it going left hand. There's got to be another way. I finished with just one uh, like cool down movement drill which is what I would try and um, finish on if I'm being very good. So picking something that's way below kind of on-site level and just re-ingraining in that technique. So this yellow is a lovely one to finish on. Where we can just kind of slow things down again. Get back into a bit of a rhythm. So, I hope you enjoyed watching that session with V. It was super insightful for me behind the camera to watch, but also just always super interesting to see how well you apply your own like theories and coaching in practice on the wall. Um, Try. Yeah, how did you, how was that? Yeah, really good. It was a really good yeah, session, actually. Fun. It was nice to, uh, to be encouraged to start with the warm-up that I would prescribe to yeah. all of my clients as well, because in all fairness, a lot of the time, as much as I do this day in day out for my job, which I think is what ingrates it into me, to integrate it into what is now busy life every time doesn't always happen. So actually that was a really good session for me because I did all the things that I should always do. Um, so yeah, felt really strong, really hot, really sweaty. Yeah. Um, but yeah, actually calmed all right, so yeah. You will see us, I hope, in another video. Soon, maybe if I can drag her back on the channel again, then maybe. Yeah, watch this space for more videos of Maybe on The Rock next. And I. And if you haven't already seen The Rock next, the real rock. No, 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 we could do a, we could do a climb on the rock. On the rocks. Yeah. Maybe. Like a sport climb on the rocks. Yeah, sport climb, bouldering. If you haven't next already seen outside. those video, the videos with B and I would be coaching her pyramid theory and movement then I will leave those as like cards here so you can go and check those out they're well worth a watch and yeah that's it for now see you in my next one